Margaret Atwood once said that um, reviewers are really like town criers. They kind of clang the bell and uh, draw people's attention to things. It's a kind of balancing act activity, really. Um, you're, doing, you're writing literary criticism, which is a sort of semi-academic activity, um, but you're doing it under journalistic conditions with everything that that um, implies. And so I think you've got to bear in mind as you're preparing to do your review that you need to offer um, fact and analysis, get those in balance. You need to offer um, information and um, some kind of um, assessment. You need to offer um, lively writing as well because you're, you're doing this um, for um, a newspaper and people need to be attracted into the review. Because of that, um, I would set a lot of store really by uh, an opening sentence, which I see as almost like reader bait, to pull the reader into uh, the review. Uh, if you're writing for a newspaper nowadays, um, you will also find that you're not going to have anything like the amount of space you would really like to have. So you've again always got to remember the importance of concision and, and compression. Really, you can only afford to make a point once and make it as trenchantly as, as, as possible. I think the structure of the review is very important. I mean, sometimes you can find when you're starting to do a review that um, you're sort of going about it the wrong way. You might start in the middle of things and you need to backtrack it. Really, if you've only got 750 words or something, you can't afford to um, do that. But I, I would try to keep those things in mind when I was doing the review. Um, then I would start writing it. I mean, I, I used to always... Uh, do a handwritten um, version of a review, first of all, and revise that and eventually do it on screen. Nowadays, I suppose I'm more moving to trying to get onto my computer uh, as quickly as possible because it's easier revising on the computer. And I think, you know, you do need to revise a lot when you're writing a review because you really do, without wanting to sound precious about it, you really do need to try and make every single word um, count when you're, when you're writing the review. You always have to remember that almost everyone who's reading your review won't have read the book that you're talking about. So you do need to convey information about the novel, um, but you have to be careful not to convey too much information. You, you mustn't spoil narrative surprises or anything of, of, of that kind. And I think also you've got to be careful not to kind of present the information or do a little bit of retelling, a bit of narrative, uh, not to do it in a way that um, is in a different tone from the book, really, because it's very easy to make almost any book sound ridiculous if you uh, took a sort of sneery tone or, you know, were very selective in what you were um, doing. I think when you review a first novel, you, you would bear in mind that this is, you know, early work from a writer. I mean, the parallel, I suppose, I would make is that... Um, I've often judged the Betty Trask Prize, which is for a first novel, and I am very conscious when I'm reading the books there that, um, you know, you, 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 you sometimes get a very good, very striking first novel, but by and large, you're, you're, you're going to get work by people who are finding out about the form that they're writing in, they're, they're sort of finding their feet, they're finding their voice, and of course that's very interesting and fascinating. So, I mean, the thing you have to avoid it, guard against is reviewing a first novel as though it is equivalent to say a seventh or eighth novel by a writer who has had a long distinguished kind of career. The person that uh, for me is uh, one of the really great fiction reviewers, he's dead now unfortunately, is John Updike. I mean I think John Updike was a really terrific fiction reviewer, partly of course because he was a novelist himself I suppose, but even more in that he had huge amounts of space to, uh, for, for his um, reviews. Um, if it comes to just looking for what I regard as the qualities of a good review about whether it's a fiction or non-fiction, and I'm thinking of things like, you know, concision, precision, originality, um, an ability to generate excitement, a willingness to bravely say something is dreadful, uh, even if that's in the face of, you know, a lot of received opinion and so on. 
and um, most of all, being able to write um, witty prose and with very colourful phrases that stick in your mind and often epitomise writer or book. I, I would go for John Carey, who for me is an absolute model exemplary reviewer. I mean, uh, he is one of the reviewers who, well, he's the reviewer who's had the greatest influence on, on, on me as a, as, a, as a reviewer, I'm sure.